And I want to metaphorically take you to the theatre. Now, we covered this story yesterday. It has moved on. The Soho Theatre now banning a supposed comedian from performing there after Jewish audience members were reportedly made to feel unsafe and generally heckled at a show. Now, we're going to be speaking with one of those unfortunate individuals in a, in a moment. But LBC made inquiries about this story to find out how organisations associated with the so-called comedian, Paul Curry, are reacting to the story. This is what happened when LBC's Henry Riley called Circusful. Now, that's an entertainment agency which lists Curry as one of its artists and performers to see if they were going to continue to represent the man. Hello, Circusful. Speaking. Hello there, it's Henry Riley calling from LBC Radio. I just wondered if I could ask you a question. I note on your website, Paul Curry is listed as one of your artists associated. Is he still in your books? Um, we have no comment to make on the matter. But you're Thank aware you. of the incident in London, sir? Uh, we have no comment to make on the sir, matter. If you would like to send an email to hello at circusful.org, and I'll pass that on to my CEO. An audience member from Israel was hounded out of a theatre in I'm London. Just, I'm, I am just saying, I've explained the situation. I am a team coordinator who just works in the desk, so if you okay. would like to send an email to hello at circusful.org, and I'll pass that but on to But just to, to confirm, CEO. you haven't suspended him yet, or you still you still employ, you still employ I'm, him? I'm, I am saying no comment, and I've asked you to do the thing that you need to do next. OK. Thank you. There is one remaining date which I'm not going to publicise within the United Kingdom. As yet, that theatre has not pulled the event. But let's go to someone, one of the people who was singled out. What a horrific experience that must have been. Liav Etan was the theatre-goer and joins me now. Thank you for coming on, uh, Mr Etan. Can I start by asking you why you chose to attend that show? Had you heard reviews about the man? Good morning to you. Good morning. Hi. Um Actually, I, I hadn't heard about him until that day. It was a pretty spontaneous thing. Okay. Um, having, having experienced London in the, in the past four months, I, I already know that before heading out, I should probably do a background check on Instagram. Um, right. So I do that before going to any, any club night, almost any event. But that was really a spontaneous thing that we just wanted to see before dinner. And just to explain, Ms. Eaton, why do you do a background check? Because I've been to uh, club nights, for example, where in the middle in the middle of the night, some DJ will take the the mic and start hounding Israeli occupation or something like that, and and that's not a very pleasant thing for me to hear as an as an Israeli. Of course not. Um, to clarify, you're living here now, are you, Mr. Eaton, or you're visiting? Yes, I am a UK resident. I've you're... lived here in fact for the past five years. Okay. Do you mind if it doesn't distress you taking us through what happened at the at the at the event? Yes, yes, of course. Um, so my friend and I headed to So Theatre, where I am a member and, and have been seeing a lot of shows before. Um, it was it was supposed to be a non-verbal co comedy show, mostly like physical sort of comedy. Um, and towards the end of the show, Paul Grennan um, produced a Ukraine flag followed by an Israel flag, uh, which which upset me and I'm sure would have upset um, a lot, any Ukrainian that would have been in the crowd, to be honest. Uh, this comparison, uh, we didn't, we didn't boo, we didn't react, we didn't heckle, we didn't do anything really. We just stayed silently. Didn't really enjoy the rest of the show because our mind was already elsewhere. Um, and then at the end of the show, Paul got the the, the crowd to get on their feet and clap for him. Um, and my friend and I just didn't stand up and didn't clap for him. And and that must have bothered him. So he just turned around to us and said. To the entire crowd, thank you to these two people for not standing up and clapping. How many people were in the audience, roughly, would you say, Mr. Eaton? It was a full house. Um, I think it was a sold out show, uh, easily over 100. Over 100 folk, okay. So he singles you and your friend out. What happened next? So he kept lingering on us as if waiting for me to apologize or to stand up and clap. Um, so I said, thank you for that Palestine flag, hoping that that would explain to him why I didn't choose to get up and clap and hoping that he would just move on. Now, I think there's some foul language coming there, so I'd ask you not to say it, but I understand he then became abusive. Is that correct? Yes. He asked me if I enjoyed the show. I said, uh, well, up until that point. And then he turned on me, uh, started screaming that he's from Belfast, um, and therefore he knows everything about ceasefires. And then he started using the F word a lot, uh, telling me to get the F out of the show and, and calling me some illustrative names. <laughs> what was the reaction of the rest of the audience, Mr. Eaton? Um, I think a lot of them were shocked. 
some were, uh, some booed at us. Uh, there was one guy from the first row that um, shouted shame at us. Now we we had to gather our things and go uh, because then Paul Curry started to um, he took away he took out his Palestine flag again and started making it a public chant, chanting, uh, trying to get the whole crowd to chant "Cease fire now and free Palestine." I see. So you leave the theatre. Um, I would imagine you felt a degree of vulnerability in the immediate region as people came out of the theatre, or am I over-egging that? No, that's absolutely correct. The, the, the sad thing is, um, and, and Paul Curry must have known, known this because of where we were sat, the only way out of the theatre um, was actually through the stage. So we had to pass right next to him and be instantly recognisable by the entire crowd that he was then inciting against us. Um, unfortunately, the theatre was not did not have a contingency plan for something like that. I, I don't. I don't think if they have ever considered having security for the crowd from from the performer. Um, well, and well. there was nobody there to kind of take us to a side room and protect us. So they just <laughs> sent us out to the street while they allowed the crowd out from a side from a different door. I'm so, horrified that what was meant to be a night of amusement turned out into effectively a horrific, a horror show for you. Has anyone been in contact? Have you heard from the act himself or the theatre? No, I have not heard from the actor himself. Um, I think he declined to comment everywhere. Yes, he has. Uh, I saw last night the So Theatre was in touch with the campaign against anti-Semitism and, and um, they sent out a... A very well-worded apology, uh, stating that they're not going to invite Paul Curry back. I think that was I think that was a good apology. I'm I'm happy that they chose to be on the right side of this. Later in the show, lastly, Mr. Ritan, later in the show, we're going to be look at what would appear to be the rise in anti-Semitism, whether it's within a major political party, an MP having people surrounding his home, people who were wearing paraglider stickers on their uh, st on their tunics, or their outfits, their course, uh, clothes. Uh, and there not being any meaningful sentence. Um, are you concerned about a rise of anti-Semitism in this country? Absolutely. I think it's the rise against anti-Semitism that enabled Paul Curry to act the way he did and, did not, and not expect anybody from the crowd to, to be on our side and to, to protect us, right? Um, well, credit to you. That was very brave for you and your colleague to, to take that position, particularly surrounded by nearly 100 others. I'm grateful for your time. I'm very sorry you had such a shocking night.